Welcome everybody to our North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership Development in Safeguarding Learning Event. Um, my name is Kat Morrison and I'm a Policy and Development Officer for the Business Unit. Um, I'm joined today in the back room by our kind of my, my other Policy and Development Officers. I've got Hayden Reese jones and Stephanie Free. Um, they're on hand just to kind of chip in if uh, they want to add, add anything that I'm missing off. Hayden's going to be keeping an eye on the chat for you um, and he'll be adding any links um, if I'm sharing any key documents. Um, today we're just going to give you a business unit update so I'll, I'll cover the agenda in a couple of slides but it's just kind of what we've been doing as a business unit um, over the last uh, since our last one which was probably about a year ago when we updated you um, just kind of sharing some of those key documents and updates with you little bit of housekeeping just before we make a start. Um, I think you're all on mute at the minute. Um, it just makes it so much easier um, to get rid of some of that background noise. Um, we are quite a small group, so please do ask any questions, um, anything that we're talking about that you're not sure of. Let us know um, and we can explain things or we can pop links in the chat. We will record this session and it will go on our YouTube channel. Um, Hayden works his uh, wizardry at kind of cutting it all down and he'll uh, knock off any mistakes that I'll invariably make. Um, so please do keep your cameras off as well. As I've already said, you can access these presentations after the recording. Um, we do pop them on our website under our Learning for Professionals page. Um, and we also have our YouTube channel. Um, so if you go onto YouTube and just search MISCP, they will come up. Um, normally Hayden will have them on within a week or so uh, when it's all edited. Um, if you go on there and like and subscribe, you'll get notifications of any new ones that come up as well. Um, and then once this course has been completed, um, you'll get a, a questionnaire and a certificate through from NYES to um, get your certificate of attendance. So um, just to kind of run you through the agenda, a little bit of a whistle stop tour of some of the work of the partnership. Um, we're going to be looking at a really key piece of uh, documentation around working together to safeguard children. And then I'm going to give you some updates on some of the document reviews that um, are useful for partners, particularly around our one minute guides and practice guidance. Um, lots of work going on at the minute in relation to the updates of some of our strategies. So um, I'll give you some updates on that one as well. And some of our learning from our safeguarding practice review groups. Um, quick headlines on some of the world of MACE or our multi-agency child exploitation. Um, and then I'm going to spend a little bit of time looking at our um, partnership website. Um, hopefully you'll have seen we've made some changes to the website over the summer, but I'm going to take you over onto the website live and kind of show you what some of those changes look like. Um, we've got a new campaign that's been put together, so I'll show you some of the information in relation to that. And then we'll finish up on just some upcoming training and learning for you. As always, please do kind of keep engaging in the chat um, and we'll finish off by sticking around at the end if anyone does have any questions that they want to ask. Um, I always stay on after the recordings finished as well. So if anyone does have anything they want to ask that doesn't doesn't want to be on the recording, um, please stick around and we can have a chat at the end of the session. So I'm going to start with um, a key document. Hopefully you're all aware of this. Um, working together to safeguard children is a piece of statutory guidance. Um, it sets out the expectations for the systems, the processes and the ways that people work together to support and protect children and their families. So it applies to all children from those who are unborn right up until they reach the 18 up the age of 18 and uh, this is regardless of whether those children live with their families whether they live in care or whether they live independently now in december 2023 the government gave us um, a lovely christmas present with a new version of this document being released and this replaced the previous document um, which was uh, kind of dated back to 2018 now, this new working together document is central to the government's strategy, um, stable homes built on love. Now, this is outlines um, the commitment for every child to grow up in a safe, stable and loving home. So other documents um, updated alongside working together was an updated um, statutory framework which sets out the relevant legislation relating to safeguarding um, children's social care national framework. So this sets out 
expectations for um, senior leaders, practice supervisors and practitioners in local authorities with regards to um, safeguarding in social care and a guidance document on improving practice with children, young people and families, which provides advice for local areas on how to embed working together guidance and the social care national framework. So, as I've already mentioned, there was some quite significant changes um, in relation to this new iteration of working together. Um, and anybody who is working with children and families in, in the field of safeguarding um, has to have an awareness and an understanding of what that means for the work that we do with children and families. So North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership um, have an obligation to update the Department of Education about what these changes mean for multi-agency working in North Yorkshire through the publication of our multi-agency safeguarding arrangements. This needs to be completed by December 2024. So in the run up to that, um, over the last nine, ten months or so, um, we've been having monthly meetings right across um, all of our operational partners to look at the implement implementation of the changes to working together and how we can work together um, to support each other with implementation of these changes, both as single agencies and as multi-agency partners. One of the key things in relation to that is how we can kind of disseminate that learning to all of our practitioners about what working together is, what the changes are and why it's so important. So all the information in relation to the changes um, we've collated onto an NYSCP web page. Um, this is easily accessible. Um, it's in the About Us drop down section. Um, Hayden, if you want to pop a link in the chat and I'm going to take you onto the website live later on in the session. So I'll show you where it is. Um, but this is a really useful page for you to share with your teams, with your wider workforce. It breaks it all down for you. So it includes what working together is, why it's important as a document, why it's important for us. Um, for any of our roles in terms of working with children and families um, and it really gives a very clear summary of the changes um, what it means in North Yorkshire, what it means nationally, what it means for individual practice. We've tried to put the information in as many different formats as possible so we can make it as accessible as possible so we have a very clear one minute guide accessible for professionals and we've put one together for parents and carers as well um, so they can have an understanding of the documents and what you know what it means what it could mean for families in North Yorkshire. Um, Steph's very kindly done a very short recording um, so you can access that on the YouTube channel I think it's about 10-11 minutes Again, just a very quick, clear overview on what working together is and what the changes mean. So you can access that and you can use it. You can share it in your team meetings and it just gives everybody in your team that kind of broad understanding of what's going on. Um, a reminder as well that we are going to be holding um, a learning event. So we're taking over um, our monthly learning events uh, for the session on the 4th of December. Um, and it's going to be a slightly extended session. It's going to be two hours. Um, and we've got a full partnership update on what working together changes have meant for North Yorkshire, what our multi-agency safeguarding arrangements will look like. And then really interestingly, um, we've got updates from all of our statutory partners. So you'll have updates from um, Children and Family Service, police and our health colleagues, as well as um, the voluntary sector and education, just to kind of look at what the changes mean for them and how we've all really been working together to implement it. So as I've said, um, working together is a is a large document. Please don't feel overwhelmed by it, um, but it is important to familiarise yourself with it and your teams. So please take advantage of, of what we've put together for you. Um, use the web page, use the one minute guide um, and please do access that learning event. It will be a very useful learning event for everybody and I think um, when we've done similar ones in the past where we've had input from um, multi-agency partners you get a real insight into kind of the safeguarding of you know how safeguarding works in police how it works in health even though you're not necessarily in that field I think it can be really useful for partners to get that understanding. If you do have any questions around working together or anything that you need in terms of supporting that implementation 
please do let us know. That's what we're here uh, as the business unit to support you with. <clears throat> So just moving on from working together, um, I just kind of wanted to go through some of the documents in relation to what we've been working on, what we've been reviewing. Um, so the business unit um, have been working through effectively all of our one minute guides and practice guidance just to make sure they're all up to date um, in light of the changes to working together. Now, there's been some of these documents where we've had to make no changes whatsoever. There's been some where we've made minimal changes. So that might be a change to the updated reference document. You know, the fact that we're talking about the 2023 working together rather than 2018. Um, but there have been some where we've made more significant reviews and changes as part of our generic review schedule. And um, these have all kind of been added on here for your awareness. And obviously the QR will take you to our page, which has all of our one minute guides and practice guidance for you to access. Now, I just want to remind you um we often hear from partners that they will save a piece of practice guidance or a one minute guide in their own personal file on their computer just so they've got it for easy access and um, we would really discourage partners from doing that because we are updating these documents so regularly um, it's highly likely that if you've got one saved in your own personal file it might not be the most up to date version. Um, so what we've now done is we've converted all of our one minute guides and practice guidance to web pages. Um, and when you go onto those web pages, you'll see right at the bottom um, when we've updated it. So you can see when it's last been looked at, when it's last been refreshed. Um, but you you should know that that one on the web page is the most up to date one that you can access. Um, a couple of key pieces of practice guidance of note that have been completely refreshed um, are in relation to professional curiosity and managing different professional perspectives. Now, these documents have been produced together um, and ideally should be read together in conjunction. Um, I don't suppose it will come as any surprise to anybody um, that professional curiosity comes up time and time again in national and local safeguarding practice reviews. Um, you know, you'll see as we look at some of the, the learning um, from later on in today's session, it, it keeps coming up again and again. Now, these documents are key to understanding the skills of professional curiosity and why it's needed with working with families so much. Um, we've had really positive feedback on these documents so far from our safeguarding partners and how useful we hope they'll be um, for practitioners. Um, so please do access them. Um, I'll just say the managing different professional perspectives one we'll hopefully have on um, early next week. We're just waiting on um, a final sign off on some of the final bits of wording. Um, but that is a really useful one because it's all about kind of um, not necessarily around professional conflict and resolution, but the the, the understanding that um, people have different professional perspectives and that should be an opportunity to develop a deeper understanding of what is happening for that for the life of that family. Um, we are looking at holding a learning event in November looking specifically at these two documents in a little bit more detail um, and we're going to be looking at some case examples and what this means for practice so please do book on to that one to find out a little bit more um, I've just popped in the bottom corner uh, the word TriEx, which uh, I've not gone completely mad. Um, TriEx is um, a partner organisation that we work alongside um, and they are a national organisation um, and they will work with us to produce practice guidance um, nationally, um, but also pieces that are relevant specifically for North Yorkshire practice. So. As a business unit and as partners, we will produce some, but TriEx will also produce um, bits of practice guidance as well. Um, we have them all together on our website, but you can see quite clearly the ones that have been put together on TriEx um, and you can access that page. Um, Hayden, if it's possible, if you can pop the link for TriEx in the chat and then partners can just spend a little bit of time having a look at it and familiarising themselves with the site. Already there. Ah, thank you. So just moving on from document reviews, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the strategy work we've been looking at as a partnership. 
Now, firstly, I want to look at being young in North Yorkshire. Um, I hope this is um, a piece of strategy that you're all familiar with. This is our kind of multi-agency partnership strategy for children and young people living in North Yorkshire. And the best way I can describe it is to think of it as a bit of an umbrella strategy. So being young in North Yorkshire is our overarching strategy for children and young people and under which kind of sit our other strategies and our ways of working. Now, the vision for the strategy was shaped by young people living in North Yorkshire who, when asked what they wanted for their futures, was kind of summed it up in one word, which was opportunity. Um, and the vision is all children and young people are safe, happy, healthy and able to achieve in North Yorkshire. The action plan for the strategy was derived around this to ensure that life chances for young people were not adversely affected by their circumstances or where they live. And it focused on four key priorities of a safe life, um, a happy family life, a healthy life and achieving in life. Now, this strategy is currently in review. Um, as a partnership group, it's been agreed that that vision and those four strategic priorities of a safe life, a happy family life, a healthy life and achieving in life are still relevant. It's that's still kind of the priorities that we want to be working to. But I'm sure you can imagine the world is a very different place compared to, um, you know, the end of 2020, 2021, when this strategy was written. Um, and we really kind of want to unpick those strategic priorities and focus on what these actually look like for children and families and how we can kind of capture progress and success. And how do we know that as a partnership, we're doing a good job of this with our families in North Yorkshire? And there's some complexities to it. You know, if you think about a happy family life, happy is a difficult word to define. And for children and families, happiness can mean a lot of different things. Um, and if, for example, we look at safe and a safe life, we need to now look at the safety that children need to feel in the digital spaces, um, as well as in kind of the, the physical places and spaces they're, sent, they're spending their time as well. And alongside that, explore that that need for children and families to explore risk safely. You know, we, we want families and children to um, take risks and build that resilience, but we want them to do it in a safe and supported way. So you can see the complexities in all of those. Um, and if I just move on to the next slide, um, hopefully some of you will have attended our consultation events in the summer where we looked at the development of being young in North Yorkshire um, alongside the um, early help strategy. So I think we had about 100 um, partners attend. We ran three sessions over the summer and we asked them some key questions around um, being young in North Yorkshire and early help. Um, and attendees showed a real appetite in wanting to be involved in this consultation process. Um, so. Um, we had uh, colleagues attend from um, our statutory partners, um, so health, um, police, local authority, right from senior leadership to frontline practitioners. We had representatives from our education sector, again, from early year settings right through to further education and the variety of our voluntary and community sector organisations. Um, again, we put the events in at different times of day so we can ensure we had people attend. You know, we know some people lunchtime isn't the best time, so we put some evening ones as well. Um, and the events provided insight um, into the current use of the strategies and how they are understood by practitioners, as well as the impact from families. So from the partner feedback clear themes have emerged um, and the strategies for both being young in North Yorkshire and early help are ongoing with the understanding that they will be underpinned by this feedback received um, and a vision to develop a trauma-informed approach and way of working. The strategies will provide a framework in which practitioners can support children, young people and their families um, and both um, and all the future strategies will share this same consistent language and approach. So just before I move on to harmful sexual behaviour, I just kind of wanted to touch on early help. Um, now, some of you will have seen our early help strategy. And again, this is another one that's under review at the minute. But while we're discussing early help, I just think it's really helpful to show you this slide. Um, I haven't put it together. It's been shared with us by um, some uh, colleagues from one of our early help teams. But I think it's really useful just to think about what early help actually is. Um, 
Many of us see and think of early help as a single service. Um, we often hear kind of the terminology, oh, we refer to early help um, and uh, children and families worker may come and support the family. But early help is so much more than that. Um, it's a system of services and support that wrap around a child and a family. So if you look at like the complexity, please don't worry about kind of looking at it all. But it's all those different services that can provide that early support for that family or young person. So you look at, you know, we've got um, public health, we've got healthy child programmes, we've got mental health support, we've got voluntary sector, we've got things like sports clubs, faith groups, we've got all that community support as well. We've got all the different kind of groups that run in those communities. They all have that crucial role in providing that early help that families need. Um, and when we look at this early help strategy moving forwards, it's about developing that understanding and that awareness of this so that um, communities and, and families have, have that awareness around all the different elements of support that are available for them. So I'll just go back and just touch on um, our harmful sexual behaviour strategy. Um, so again, some of you may be aware of this already, um, but the partnership executive um, have made it a strategic priority to have a better understanding of the issues around harmful sexual behaviour amongst children and young people in North Yorkshire. Um, so we had an audit commissioned by the NSPCC and that's been completed. That was kind of completed uh, around spring this year. Um, and the findings from this audit have been disseminated amongst partners and they're informing the development of this strategy. So again, this one is built under those foundations of being young in North Yorkshire and follows the, the principles of using that same consistent language with a focus on a partnership approach to understanding sexualized behavior in children and young people what's developmentally appropriate and what could be deemed as harmful. Documentation and support materials are being produced alongside this, which will be clear in their message about um, that all sexual activity, sexualized activity requires a response. However, it needs to be understood that behaviours are part of a continuum and appropriate actions are required. Um, so there'll be support and information that will help practitioners with usable information and support to do this. Um, we're developing those new materials for um, a dedicated and soon to be updated specialist section on the website. We're going to look at a one minute guide linking um, supporting toolkits for practitioners. Um, and there's some recognition that there are increasing worries about online sexualized behaviours and how virtual and real lives can overlap, becoming indistinguishable for some young people. And the strategy considers this, um, as will the actions arising from it. So please do keep an eye out for these kind of emerging strategies. Um, they're, they're in process at the minute and we're hoping, you know, we've got timescales for these to be presented to the executive board um, either towards the end of this year or early next year um, and they will be available for partners um, in spring next year. So I'm going to touch on some of the work in relation to audits um, and we're going to start with multi-agency learning themed audits. Um, so North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership carry out a series of multi-agency learning themed audits throughout the year. Each audit explores a different safeguarding theme and the multi-agency responses to it. The findings from the audit are collated and shared by the partnership business unit, and these will include um, highlighting good practice as alongside areas for development, actions, next steps, further resources, things like that. So over the last 12 months, um, we have completed um, themed audits on child exploitation and multi-agency responses to children who are at risk of exploitation. And what we found was there was lots working well, particularly in relation to multi-agency communication and the ways that partners were working together. We saw really positive engagement uh, with, per with parents, um, an identification of perpetrators and the disruption work around that uh, those perpetrators through our MACE Level 2 processes. And we saw timeliness in the responses in terms of supporting those children and young people. 
professional curiosity coming up again in um, areas for development again kind of how can we dig a little bit deeper to try and find out a little bit more about what's happening um, in relation to the lives of these young people who are being exploited? Um, one of the things that we've picked up um, as a MACE team is that um, whilst when a child had been identified as being at risk of exploitation, the responses were positive, the partnership working um, was strong, there perhaps could have been some perhaps earlier recognition that there was a, a risk of exploitation. So we have been doing a little bit of additional work around picking up um, some of those earlier signs of exploitation. Um, and we've developed that into some of our training and guidance resources. And again, as always, in terms of areas develop, of development, there was an, uh, a need for a little bit more focus on, on the child's voice in terms of um, what was happening um, <clears throat> uh, to that young person when they were being exploited. More recently, we've looked at um, responses to children who have been suspended or excluded from schools. So again, lots working well. Um, and in terms of recognising neurodiversity, um, this was a, a real strength recognised by schools um, and with schools demonstrating individual learning plans and support and wellbeing, appropriate use of EHCPs and things like that. What we saw was a real strength in relationship based practice. So partners recognised the value in working with parents and a wider family network. Um, and there was a lot of strength based working um, a culture of suspensions and exclusions being the last resort for schools. You can see that schools were trying to keep these children in as much as possible and that multiple strategies and creative strategies were used to try and keep these children in school. Um, restorative working, positive use of reintegration meetings was also used. There was positive information sharing when referrals were made to additional support services. So um, if they were uh, asking early help or children social care. Um, however, it was worth noting that information sharing at points of transition was highlighted as an area for development. So if you think about when a child is moving um, either from one school to another school, or from primary education to secondary education, um, there was an area of development there in terms of um, how that information could be shared between one school and another. I think it's really worth noting as well that when we were doing this audit, um, we saw the passion and dedication that came through from our education partners in working with these young people. And I think in every single um, audit of the four audits that we did around um, responses to children who'd been suspended or excluded, um, an education professional was nominated for a partnership award just to highlight the, the work and the support that they were offering for those families and young people. Um, just in terms of areas for development, there was a couple of bits that came out, um, particularly, again, this probably falls around the, under that professional curiosity bracket, um, but considering alternative hypotheses around what is going on for that young person. So there was perhaps an over-reliance on diagnosis of neurodiversity for children displaying challenging behaviours. Um, but how, you know, each of the four children that we looked at as part of this audit had experienced various degrees of trauma. So that might have been professional, uh, sorry, parental separation, domestic abuse. Um, and what we needed to be a little bit more curious about was the consideration of how that trauma can impact behaviour um, and a consideration or a hypothesis, alternative hypothesis around that may be the cause of some of that behaviour alongside um, potential diagnosis of neurodiversity. So what we're looking at is hypotheses looking at both and and. So it can be this and it can be this rather than either or. It doesn't have to be kind of segmented that way. Um, there was a little bit around kind of um, better use of um, smart targets and evidence evidence based targets needed in um, assessments. Um, and again, um, lack of some of that multi agency uh, communication, particularly in relation to some of the multi agency meetings that were happening around those young people. So key bits of learning. Again, we do have um, a web page dedicated to all of our learning that you can access. But I just kind of wanted to highlight some of the main bits for you there. 
Um, I'm only going to touch on this briefly, um, just in case kind of partners hear about this or um, it's something that's kind of spoken about and you, you're not sort of sure what it is. Um, but Joint Targeted Area Inspection or a JTI um, is an inspection of local area arrangements and how leaders, managers and practitioners work together across the local authority, police and health providers and partner wider partner services to safeguard children and promote their welfare. Um, so it's um, a partnership inspection um, and it covers um, different safeguarding themes. So currently the theme for JTI is around serious youth violence. Um, and whilst we haven't had a, a, any notification that we are having a JTI, um, it's one of those light schools ones that they can come at any time. Um, and there is ongoing work around preparation for those JTIs. So uh, partners have been looking at doing a mock JTI around serious youth violence, which I'll talk about in, in a couple of slides. The next theme, which is uh, likely to change uh, to relatively quickly, is uh, domestic abuse. So again, it's um, uh, if the inspection came through, they would be looking at those multi-agency arrangements and how we would work around uh, children who are affected by domestic abuse in the household. Um, I've popped a QR code on there. That takes you to a one minute guide that just explains a little bit more around what a JTI is and what it involves. But um, I just wanted to kind of bring it to your attention. Moving on, another audit. Um, we do love them in the partnership. Um, looking at the school safeguarding audit. I know we've got a few schools on in the session today and we've also got some non-schools in the session today. Um, but I thought it's useful to touch on. Um, and again, even if you're not from a school, you can kind of pick up on some of the learning from this. So again, we run this biennially um, where we ask all schools uh, and education establishments across the county to complete this kind of self-assessment looking at their safeguarding arrangements. This is done through kind of a spreadsheet and you, uh, self assessment. They fill it all in, look at kind of what they're, uh, whether they feel there's any areas for improvement, any actions that they need to take forwards. Um, and then what's something that we did a little bit differently this year is the partnership took uh, a 3% uh, random dip sample of those audits that were submitted. Um, I think we get, you know, well over 400 come in. 3% um, of those we invited to a panel session. So again, just an opportunity to have a little bit more of an in-depth discussion with those schools that kind of submitted the audit. And it gives a little bit more of an insight into um, the use of the tool, um, how they're implementing it, and um, lots of things like that, really. So just to kind of summarise some of the, the audit findings, um, there's a there's a big report on this that we have on the website. And obviously, we've been sharing lots of information with schools, um, but some real key areas of strength, um, particularly around well embedded, safer recruitment processes. Um, there was 100 percent compliance across management of safeguarding sections in the audit. Um, lots of kind of safeguarding training and induction that was seen as a real strength um, and a creativity in the way that schools deliver those safeguarding messages. Um, and again, an area of strength around prevent and radicalisation. So the majority of schools reported leaders and staff had received appropriate training for prevent and radicalisation. Um, there was only a small number, I think less than 10 percent that reported this was an area for development and obviously we've shared those training resources with them. Summary of findings um, that came out in terms of recommendations. Um, I won't go through these. You can you'll access the slides later, um, but it's just useful to see. This is just as kind of a headlines of what the recommendations looked like. I could probably say that a lot of these have already been completed and it was about kind of sharing the guidance and the resources a little bit wider. Um, and they've all been picked up, um, like say, are in transit working on or completed by um, relevant partnership subgroups. Um, and we're in close communication with a lot of our education groups to make sure that we are um, completing these uh, to education requirements, really. Um, moving on from audits, um, but another really key bit of learning um, that I want you to take away is in relation to our safeguarding practice review groups. Um, you may hear this called a SPRIG. Um, everyone loves an acronym. Um, that's kind of that's the what we look at for safeguarding practice review, review group. Um, sometimes a child suffers a serious injury or death 
as a result of abuse or neglect. Understanding not only what's happened, but also why it's happened um, can help improve our responses in the future. So the purpose of a serious child safeguarding case review at local and national level is to identify improvements that can be made to safeguard and promote the welfare of children. They should seek to prevent or reduce the risk of reoccurrence of similar incidents. Um, they're not conducted to hold individuals, organisations or agencies to account. Um, and the sharing from the learning of these reviews is vital for all practitioners to reflect on to ensure practice is continually evolving in the best interest of children, young people and families. Now, practitioners can submit cases for consideration for the SPRIG, um, and this can be done via um, the referral form, which is available on our homepage of our website and submitted to the business unit. Um, so if you have any questions about submissions of a SPRIG referral, please do um, contact us at the business unit. We're happy to kind of talk through any consideration of cases. Um, and as I've said, when we've completed a safeguarding practice review um, we summarise that learning for you um, through the form of what we call a seven point briefing and we have all those on our learning for professionals page for you can for you to access and um, share with your teams. Now I just want to share with you this one isn't on our website yet but it will be in the coming weeks it's just in kind of um, final stages of print for the seven point briefing um, but I just wanted to share with you um, this case in relation to Child X. Now Child X, like I say, recently um, completed through the Safeguarding Practice Review Group, quite a complex case um, and it refers to a six-year-old child whose parent was um, in a polyamorous relationship with two transgender adults. Now Child X had previously resided with grandparents out of area, quite a significant distance away from North Yorkshire. Child X's parent uh, made an unplanned move to North Yorkshire on their own with the two adults who they were in a relationship with and they'd met these two adults via social media. Um, so this was the parent's first time having responsibility for Child X. Um, they were a significant distance away from grandparents and they were considered vulnerable. So they were open to services, they were known to services. Sadly, um, it transpired that Child X uh, received some significant injuries highlighted in bruising and marks which came to light um, and obviously support was put in place for that child and family. Now when this case uh, was looked at um, through the SPRIG, there were some key areas of learning that came out. So particularly in relation to Child X's behaviours, so Child X was um, demonstrating some quite challenging behaviours and this was put down to um, a possible neurodiversity um, and at this point there was no consideration given to whether this could be uh, these behaviours could be down to um, trauma or consideration of emotional neglect so if we go back to again it mirrors what we were talking about with some of the audit work when we were looking at that that consideration of an and or, uh, and or both hypothesis rather than just singularly looking at one. So as a partnership we're going to look at whether we can look at some multi-agency training on childhood behavioural presentation to include neurodiversity, attachment, trauma and emotional neglect. Um, part of Child X's case is that um, the parent didn't want to accept a domestic violence notification which contained significant risks um, and it was shared with the social care team but then did not result in any action. Um, so what we need to look at is a multi-agency guidance on the management of domestic violence notifications and um, particularly when they are declined by adults in the same house as a child. Um, with Child X, there were three adults in the household, um, all of whom Child X referred to as dad. Now, the assessments carried out focused on the biological parent, um, so the risk related to the other two adults were not included in the safety planning. Um, there was no consideration of um, the, uh, the parent's mental health um, needs or how they were adjusting to that parental role in the house. 
So we need to ensure that assessments cover all adults in the household, especially when they have some caring responsibility for a child. Um, and it is possible that um, a lack of experience of working with transgender individuals led to a nervousness of asking what could be deemed as personal questions in terms of um, gender, gender identification. So again, practitioners perhaps need to be supported to have that same level of professional curiosity, regardless of the makeup of the household. Again, as all three adults were referred to as dad, um, in some records it was confusing um, which information related to each adult and some information in agency records were stated as fact, but it was not stated where the information came from and whether this was a credible source. Um, the importance, so again, the learning from that is in relation to the importance of clear record keeping and it should be part of all uh, agency safeguarding training. Um, and we've got to be clear as a partnership that there is no ambiguity in the way that we are in identifying adults and children and our safeguarding records. Um, we picked up a little bit about uh, Child X's voice was not captured um, and little consideration of whether their behaviours could be a sign of trauma or emotional neglect, which I've already talked about. Um, and again, practitioners need to make those um, opportunities to see the child in places where they have a freedom to speak um, and to use appropriate tools and support communication and understanding um, the lived experience of the child, which includes both voice and the behaviour, um, and to be persistent and curious about communicating with a child. You know, it, it might not be the right time, that one time that you go. Um, you know, we've all had days when we don't particularly want to speak to somebody, um, but to have that tenacity and to go back and to think of a different way of doing it or a different way of communicating, we need to explore all those av avenues to um hear what that child is saying um, and when I say hear what that child is saying um, I mean it in a liberal sense in that yes we want to hear the words that they're saying but we want to also hear how they are communicating with us through their behaviours through what they're not saying and again I go back to the professional curiosity document um, where we look at that in a lot more detail. So just to give me a break from talking uh, for two minutes um, I just want to hand over to you to just pop a couple of bits in the chat I've shared with you a lot of learning um, and I'd really appreciate if there was if you had any other ideas about how best we can disseminate this learning to professionals. Um, what's going to be the quickest way? What's the most impactful way? We know how busy everyone is. You haven't got time to read in lots and lots of documents. So if there's anything that you can think of that's kind of a quick, well, this would be really useful. Please just have a couple of minutes just to pop it in the chat. While I'm leaving you thinking that through, if anyone puts anything in, I'll pick that up in a bit. I'm going to touch briefly on some of our um, multi-agency child exploitation headlines. Um, so as you can see um, in the top corner, that just gives you a kind of a bit of a picture of um, our young people at risk of sexual and criminal exploitation over the last couple of years. And you can see a consistency over the last couple of quarters of the number of children at risk of exploitation. Um, but these numbers are still consistently higher than around 12 months ago, predominantly in criminal exploitation cases. Um, and our areas with our highest numbers continue to be around the Harrogate um, and Scarborough coastal areas. Um, JTI, so again I've, I've talked about JTI, um, we recently held a mock one looking at serious youth violence and I'm sure you can imagine that kind of mirrors with the world of child exploitation um, very clearly. Um, all six cases that were involved in that audit were um, male and did show a risk of exploitation. Um, so the findings showed again strong levels of multi-agency working um, but what we're finding is less clear is the impact that this multi-agency working is actually having on reducing the risk for young people. Um, so these findings alongside continual analysis of this emerging data picture are being used and explored by our strategic group. And we're looking at um, considerations of different pathways of how we can support young people. 
Um, just want to briefly touch on Operation Hamlet. This is a police operation that I won't go into a lot of detail, um, but worth noting the work that has been going on. So this was a police operation related to County Lyons drug dealing in the Harrogate area. Um, high level partnership briefings were taking place regularly to ensure key information is shared appropriately. But the takeaway for partners is the sharing of intelligence, which is key. Um, to kind of getting an understanding of what's going on for these young people. Um, hopefully you all know about the sharing of intelligence. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail on it today, but the QR will take you to um, our page, which gives you all of the guidance and then links to the online portal, um, which is a police site to submit your intelligence. It's very quick, very easy. Um, and then finally, from a MACE perspective, over the summer, we held our three face to face development sessions um, we had about 70 people come with great feedback. There were fantastic days. Um, we had Phoebe Bond from the Children's Society deliver a digital lives wor workshop, which was really well received. Um, and we're going to look at plans on how we can progress these over the next year. OK, um, I'm going to take you over to the website. There we go. So hopefully. You can see our homepage there um, and you'll see we've made a little bit of some changes, particularly around the fact that we um, now have some clear entry portals um, for kind of who you are and what you're using for access to the site. The key one that's never going to go away is worried about a child that will take you to how to make a referral for um, a young person and all the key bits of information you need there. And then we've got entry portals for if you're a professional or volunteer working with uh, young people and families, but also if you are a child or young person, parent or carer, or a new one completely is in relation to uh, if you're a member of the community or um, local businesses and um, things like that. Scrolling down a little bit. We've given you quick links to our most used or useful forms. So again, that universal referral form, early help assessment, um, if you need to make a notification to our LADO, the intelligence sharing, which I've just spoke about on the previous slide. And as I've already mentioned, if you wanted to uh, make a notification for consideration for the SPRIG. So I'm going to take you to the top bar and just kind of show you the drop down menu here. And this takes you to um, About Us, which is all kind of our key information around North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership, who we are, what we do, how we can be helpful to you, really. You've got all of our contact us information in relation things to our freedom of information. Um, and you can access our um, MYSCP e-bulletins there, or you can sign up to receive those monthly via email. Partnership Awards, hopefully you all know they are our kind of uh, the, the highlight of, of our development days where we get to highlight some of the amazing partnership work that, um, that people are doing out there. Please do click on that if you've seen something that you want to highlight and um, nominate someone for an award. And as I've said, we talk about kind of who we are and what we do. That kind of shows with you um, all of our strategic partners, um, where our strategies sit, kind of gives you a brief overview. I'll click on the Working Together to Safeguard Children page because this is the one I was telling you about um, at the start of the presentation. And you can see we've got lots of stuff here around what is working together, why we have it. We've broken down all the chapters. We've broken down who it's for, what the changes are, um, and we've included the one minute guide. You've got the presentation to access there or you've got a recording of the presentation. Again, what the changes mean for North, in North Yorkshire what it means for me and my role um, and the key documents. These are the national documents. So you've got the working together document in full. Um, you've got things like the national framework. And then the other things that the government put together were some really nice, easy read guides and illustrated copies um, of the national framework. So again, things that you can kind of pick up quite quickly and links to our masterclass there at the bottom. Scrolling you back up to the top, um, this is our professional section. So again, on the drop down, you can see we've got um, some key pages for you there. Of note um, is our Be Aware Child Exploitation Hub. So anything that you need around child exploitation will be on that section there. Forms for professionals and tools will take you to those key forms, many of which are on the front page. But again, a little bit more information about them on there. Um, we've got a full page on LADO, so that's got all the um, information, practice guidance, resources all collated onto one page. Learning for professionals, um, we've already talked about, that's where you want to go to kind of pull out some of those key bits from our audits, um, our SPRIG, seven point briefings and things like that. 
procedures, practice and one minute guides is where we collate all of our key bits of document for you to access. And again, you can access things like wider services across North Yorkshire and training on here as well. Our children and young people, parents and carers and community pages um, are, are relatively new. They're in development um, and we're going to be consulting with some young people and parents and carers groups around these. Um, but you can see we've started to break it down into kind of accessing help, keeping safe and some of those key safeguarding messages. And then similarly with parents and carers. We've broken it down into kind of accessing some um, immediate help, wider support, looking at some of those additional um, elements of support that family can access and some of those key safeguarding themes. Um, we're really keen to keep developing these pages because we want them to be useful um, for families, young people, communities and things like that. So. If you're finding you working with a community group, you're working with a parents and carers group and you think, actually, yeah, we really need this on the website, please let us know and we will add them on. Um, we want to kind of make it as useful as possible. So that's a whistle stop tour of our website. Hopefully it's useful to just see it live and you can see how we navigate it as well. Um, but take you back to our home page as well. You'll see on here we have our latest news. So if we're picking up um, a new campaign or a key piece of document, we will always add it onto our latest news section as well. So last couple of slides from me, I just wanted to draw your attention to um, a new safeguarding um, campaign. So York and North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnerships are raising awareness of who's in charge um, when you may have been in drink or have taken drugs. Um, so in 2020, we had um, 80 pedestrians killed or seriously injured by drink drivers. 20 children, so uh, young people aged 0 to 15, were killed or seriously injured by drink drivers that year. So the campaign highlights um, things like safe sleeping and the effects that alcohol and drugs have on your body and how drinking alcohol and drugs may make you less aware of um, your child's needs. Um, so again, we've got a page on the website with all the social media assets that you can kind of like and share. Um, Hayden, it's on the campaigns page if you want to pop it on um, so people can access that one. Um, again, just a pop some QR codes on. They're always helpful um, that you can access all of our procedures, practice guidance and one minute guides um, and the training page for your convenience. Um, I think the key message is we know it can be hard to hold all this safeguarding information. Um, there's a lot of it, um, but it, the key thing is to kind of remember that if you do want to access information around a particular theme or topic, the website's there for you. So you can kind of access that guidance and it's the most up to date you can access. Um, just to kind of give you um, a reminders of some of our upcoming learning sessions, um, obviously the September one we're having today. In October, we've got Public Health coming to join us to do a session on young people and vaping, um, which again is a particularly hot topic. Um, and then in November, I've already touched on this, we're going to spend an hour looking at professional curiosity and managing different professional perspectives. And then the one on the 4th of December, I've already said that's an extended one for two hours, but really key, we're going to be looking at working together 2023 and what those partnership updates are. Last slide from me, um, a reminder to partners that all of our key links, including our social media channels, YouTube page and how you can access any podcasts. Um, that QR will take you to our e-bulletin where you can sign up and you'll get something um, roughly the first of every month um, to just give you some key safeguarding messages. Um, but please, as always, you know, you've got our contacts, you've got our emails. Um, if there's things that you need us to look at or if you need additional guidance on, that's what we're here for as a business unit team. Um, so please do um, contact us and we'll endeavour to kind of support you wherever we can.